we're looking, we have our core team here that has run projects for quite a long time, but we're always looking to do kind of a training boot camp um, for agents from the Lower Mainland and the, um, and the offices throughout the Lower Mainland to come up here and get to know the Okanagan, join our sales teams. podcast fam. I'm Tony Singh. And I'm Jenny Woon. And we have two very special guests today, Chad McTavish and Megan Michalik from Ace Project Marketing Group. How are you guys? Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. We are great. It's, um, it's a beautiful sunny day out here in Kelowna. So you guys, uh, since 2020, Ace Project Marketing Group has been steadily building a reputation for success in urban and recreational areas in real estate markets across British Columbia. Um, why don't you guys share a little bit more about yourselves and your business? Awesome, Megan, would you like to start off? Sure, uh, yeah, so Ace Project Marketing Group is a full service, all in-house services, uh, pre-sale multifamily sales and marketing team. Um, so we do specialize in Multifamily that could be townhomes, that can be condos, wood frame, or concrete. And we focus primarily here in the Okanagan, and we also do a lot of work on Vancouver Island. Hmm. How did how come you skipped Vancouver? Well, to be a hundred percent honest, we um, we as a team very early um, in our conception, we wanted to make sure that we were representing the areas that we know best. Um, so most of our team is either in the Okanagan or on the island, and a lot of the developers we've worked with in the past um, also are creating new new projects there. So we decided instead of jumping into markets that um, other people were more well versed in, we'd focus on the ones that we know best. Mm. And I know you guys talked about just um, introducing Ace Project Marketing, but Chad, why don't you introduce yourself and, and your background and, and experience in the business and then Megan afterwards? Awesome. So um, I've been in project marketing for about 20 years. Um, I started with a project marketing company called, well, back then, Sotheby's International Realty Canada, their project marketing arm. Um, I was the business manager for that company for about nine years, and I got to travel all around Canada and the US setting up projects. Um, so that's everything from hiring the salespeople, uh, teaching the developers about pricing, um, how, to, how to launch, how to, um, how to pivot when the market changes. Um, so I got to do that for five years. I've, went, I've been on projects like the Four Seasons, um, Toronto, uh, Hotel Georgia in Vancouver, Ritz-Carlton, Montreal, and then tons and tons of stuff on the North Shore in Vancouver. Um, so that's, that's kind of my pa background with, um, with project marketing. And then we came up here to um, open ACE, which we've now been on over 40 to 45 projects up here in the Okanagan. But I've been doing projects forever. Um, we have a team that's been with us. Um, most of us for about 15 to, um, or sorry, 12 to 15 years. So we kind of have the same core that we've been working with to grow with. Um, and it's, it's been working really well. Um, right. So I, unlike Chad, I have not spent my entire career in this niche of property development. However, I have spent the last 14, almost 15 years in property development. So between Vancouver and Calgary is where I started out doing interior design. Um, started out doing residential. Um, over the years, I kind of moved over into a few different facets of interior design. So then moved over into like gaming and food and beverage. Um, and then I went overseas for a bit. So I was working over in Dubai doing design management and business development there for commercial, um, for the commercial sector. So it was great experience. Just the role, like that role is design management very much as like stakeholder and relationship management, um, which I think has lended itself to my success of kind of transitioning over here with ACE. But yeah, it was great. Got to work with a lot of different multinationals who were setting up shop in Saudi Arabia and, and Dubai. And then about a year and a half ago now, I can't believe it, time flies, but about a year and a half ago, I, I came to work with ACE. Um, 
Chad and I have known each other for probably about 12 years now. So kind of like he mentioned, everyone on the core team, we've all been involved in each other's lives in some way, shape or form professionally in and out for a very long time. And so the strength of our team, I think is, it's one of the things that really drew me to ACE. It, it, it's really rare, I think, that you get such a fantastic culture and collaborative team uh, vibe and spirit. So um, it's been a really, really, you know, busy, but exhilarating year and a half here in the Okanagan working with ACE. We've got a lot done and next week we're heading into setting some goals for, you know, the next couple of years ahead of us and hoping to grow more and take on more of the Okanagan. <laughs> exciting. Um, it may be pretty obvious from this, the look of the logo, but um, what's the meaning behind the name and how did you come up with it? What was that process? This week we're, we're redoing our, um, yeah. we're going over our plans as well as looking at our brand and coming up with all of our new core values and everything else because we've been running so quickly that for me to throw something out there right now might not be what there is next week. So I apologize for that because it's, uh, yeah. it's we're, we're just changing rapidly. We're, now. we're literally in the midst. We've hired, we've hired a new creative director and she, her first task is to like, let's elevate Ace, let's do a rebrand and let's kind of, now that we have just a moment before she's going to be totally immersed in projects, we're taking advantage of her skill set <laughs> to make some changes. So. <laughs> okay, let's talk about how big your ACE team is. Um, there's on your website, there's a quite a large team. So uh, how many um, uh, positions are, are there? And, and I'm assuming with the sales team, it, it kind of comes and goes depending on the market. But what's your core team built of? Um, so ACE's core team is, um, we're spread out, like I said, between Ka um, Kelowna or the Okanagan and the island. Um, our core team, we are at about 25 um, people that we steadily work together. Um, we have everything from um, PR to uh, graphic designers, um, social media, um, social media uh, contractors, as well as we have a core team of about 15 salespeople that travel through each of our projects and ensure that um, the launch goes the correct way for any of the products we take on. Uh, we also are very different that um, we work with a lot of other companies around here as well. So some of the leaders in commercial, um, leaders in interior design, and. Um, and mortgage and mortgage brokers brokerages so those guys bring it all together um to create the outer rims of our team but definitely um sorry um <laughs> no that's okay yeah i think within our core team i mean we have the three partners so chad is the founder and the managing director um for ace and then we have madeline milne who is the cfo and we have todd Ferrer, who is the um, he's the managing partner for sales and then beneath that you have we have amazing project directors slash project managers I really have to say that because they're they are the ones at every developer will get everyone on the team for parts of their project but those project managers are the ones that are holding that developers hand overseeing all of the rollout of the marketing all of um, all of the sales team, you know, the launch and all of that. So it's a lot of work that goes into it and it's a lot of hand holding from start all the way through to completion. So mm -hmm. <laughs> amazing sales directors and managers um, that are on our team that are taking on anywhere from two to three, you know, I don't know if four, but we'll see <laughs> projects <laughs> at any given time. Then of course your sales team, graphic designers, copywriters, social media and content writers, um, business development, which is, you know, obviously that's kind of where Chad and I spend a good chunk of our time. <laughs> Ooh, um, it sounds like, which totally makes sense given your guys' scale and the fact that you're growing, there's a lot of team members behind the scenes that make everything happen um, in an efficient way. Um, both Jenny and I sell it and have teams based in Vancouver. And what we've actually been noticing um, since around, I, I would say April ish, are kind of, you know, home buyers easing off a little bit, waiting, some uncertainty around wait, uh, rates. What have you guys been seeing as a trend over the last six months um, in your marketplaces? 
uh, where you have projects specifically and are there any incentives and things being offered to purchasers? So in terms of um, our projects out here in the Okanagan, um, we have a few, um, a few new items that are joining our communities, which are really keeping our market strong. Yes, with this interest rate hike, um, people are actually taking a few, more, a, few more, <laughs> a few more steps before they actually write a contract, but we're actually seeing our market still stay pretty steady. Um, in terms of incentives, um, we've kind of stayed away from incentives so far. Um, we have a brand new um, school coming in from UBCO, which is 46 stories that will be in the center of downtown, an expansion for the hospital. Um, so we're still seeing it quite, um, quite a steady market. And so when you say the market steady, like are most of the buyers coming from like, uh, are they local buyers or are they coming from um, the lower mainland here in Vancouver, f- from Alberta, where's where is mostly the majority of the buyers coming from? We are seeing most of our buyers right now from the Surrey, Burnaby, Langley, Abbotsford area. So um, because, the new, um, because the university is coming to Kelowna, they're really, really um, looking at every different kind of product that we have in the market, as well as Ontario. So doing project marketing up here um, for the past 10 years or so, We've never seen such a big outreach um, from anywhere in Ontario until recently. Um, Toronto right now is feeding all of the databases throughout our project. So they're looking at Kelowna, they're looking at it as either a good investment um, or just a different kind of lifestyle. And, um, and we have most of our site visits right now are people flying in from Ontario. That makes sense. I mean, even for us, right, we went out that way. I'll come out and visit you guys. Uh, and we were looking at real estate because it's it's expensive, I suppose, but it's quite a bit more affordable than uh, if you were going to get something similar in Vancouver. Um, so I guess just speaking from an investment perspective, what do you guys um, have any insights to the rental market in Kelowna right now? Um, maybe just some examples about rental rates for a studio, one bedroom or two bedroom uh, downtown. Yeah, I think that obviously it depends. There's a lot of things that go into like what you could be charging for that. So you have a few different main areas out here. There's West Kelowna, you have the city proper of Kelowna, the downtown core versus, you know, some of the other more peripheral areas, Lake Country, McKinley Beach, um, all of these different areas. Definitely you'll see some variation in those price or in the rental rates, but um, honestly, the rental rates are astronomical (laughs) here at the moment. A studio, you could easily be getting 1500 yes. I'm talking a micro suite, like 313 square feet. You could get 1500 a month for that. Um, a one bedroom, you could get, I'm saying approximately 2000 to, you know, maybe 19 to 2100 roughly. 100%. Yeah. And two bedroom, easily, like 2500 a month for a downtown two bedroom in a concrete high rise is a really good value right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, any home that's being rented right now is if you're online is definitely between 4,000 and 6,000 and it's not just the peak of the summer anymore it's um it's going through full year contracts which we've never seen in the Okanagan, Penticton, Vernon, Kelowna we've always seen a spike obviously in our summer months um, because everybody's chasing the sun but now we're getting now that people the rental rates are staying all year round it's definitely changed this market a lot and we almost have zero um, we have zero rental vacancy right now so um, uh, Kelowna is definitely pushing through um, plans for people that are doing rental buildings where maybe they would have um, t- taken a back seat in the past um, and focused on developers that were building to go to sale. My question was, um, would it be better to, like, is there options to do Airbnb? Is there a lot of buildings like that being built that, that will allow short-term accommodations? There's not a lot um, the city's pretty particular about, you know, the conditions and parameters that you have to kind of meet to have an Airbnb building. Um, one of the more recent ones and probably most notable ones is Aqua by Mission Group. So that's down in the Mission area. Uh, their phase one, they did completely, you know, you were able to Airbnb. That's one day, you know, one day you could rent it. Whereas their second phase, they made it. I believe it was a three night minimum. I think so. Yeah. So they changed it slightly. Just, I mean, the integrity of the building is not going to be maintained. You know, a lot, I mean, there's pros and cons to each. For an investor, it's fabulous. But for someone that actually maybe wants to 
um, use it themselves, you don't really want to be living in an Airbnb building. So anyways, they put a lot of restrictions on it. Um, it hasn't honestly been a deterrent from my experience though. Like this project that we're sitting in front of Water Street by the park, uh, we launched Tower 1 and 2 of that last summer and it just has your standard zoning. So it's 30 day minimum rental. Um, and that just, I mean, I think that's not, like it's not difficult to say even in those summer months that you could rent it out to a family because so many families or couples or groups come out here for a few weeks at a time. So, you know, rent it out to one group of people per month and then you could ideally put a university student into it from the fall till the spring. So I think a lot of people have that game plan in mind. <laughs> Let's shift the conversation a bit from buyers and, and kind of what's happening locally in the area and maybe move to project sales from a business perspective. Um, if an agent was interested in starting to work on projects um, or so anything like that, what kinds of skills should they hone in on or what kinds of skills would you guys be looking for? So I think, um, so we're super excited about this question um, in terms of working with Oakland and growing um, growing our, our network with everybody is that we are looking, um, we're looking, we have our core team here that has run projects for quite a long time, but we're always looking to do kind of a training boot camp um, for agents from the Lower Mainland and the, um, and the offices throughout the Lower Mainland to come up here and get to know the Okanagan, join our sales teams, uh, pretty much what you need to you need to be ready to do if you join one of our sales teams is you have to be excited to pick up the phone um, that's the biggest thing that you need to do in project marketing as you two both know uh, pick up the phone make amazing notes um, get ready to um, get ready to drill into a database that comes to that is registering to learn about that project um, and what we're looking for up here is to have agents come and join us for a two to three to four month contract, learn the business, learn about projects, get to know everything that ACE is doing in Oakland, in the Okanagan, um, and, and power through, do a launch, make some money, and then head back. And then when they're ready to come out again, they're more than welcome to. We're looking really to do that with each individual office with a few members each. So we can we can share our message and then get to know our market. So we can also get to know your market as well. So when developers um, when developers want to work with the sales staff, we can say Ted or Fred were amazing and they'd be perfect for the areas that you have projects in. Yeah, you talked about picking up the phone and dial, making the dial and and being disciplined in dialing follow up calls. So would you that and that we know that's a very important task and duty that a sales manager, a sales rep, no matter what position you're in on the team, you really have to get focused. Um, what should someone expect? So let's just say you're launching a project. How does that three to four month contract look like? Are they staying at a hotel? Or are you setting up accommodations for them? And then are they working? Like, tell me how many hours they're working in a day on a launch. Um, and obviously the size of the team D changes depending on the volume of sales you expect but yeah like let's just say I'm a person who who's kind of used to my schedule and routine in Vancouver I'm going to come up for the summer to to work with you guys how does that how does that summer look like to me when I started with ACE I did start to I came on to launch a project but in terms of accommodation and whatnot I mean it's my prerogative as a professional to to take that opportunity knowing that it was going to be grueling it was going to be intense it was going to be working seven days a week and but it's all for it's all for a goal you know what i mean it's like it very much is if you put abc into it you are going to get xyz out of it so you know what i mean it's like it's basically like a boot camp and i'm saying that again but like it's like a boot camp for a project launch in pre-sales here in the Okanagan right now because it's been so frenzied and such a hot market and whatever. So you really do need to be prepared to like work your butt off, but it, it's going to be worth it financially in the end for a short amount of time. So if an agent was looking mm -hmm. to come up, 
we would um, we would we would look at just depends on the project, right? So with the project behind us, that's 650 units and three towers, and then we would maybe have a townhome project which is 25, or a building which is 60, or um, or um, a lot site which is 120 lots. So it would depend on the developer as well as kind of the timeline we see to launch from start to finish. So in most cases, the agent would find their own accommodation. They would go on to a monthly draw if it is a if it is so the monthly draw would be um, a certain amount a month that would come off your back ends of commission so it's not eating up your front end commissions when you do go to launch um, and then from there when they get up here they would go through their training they would go through um, learning how to make calls how to make proper notes um, they would do the training going throughout all of the other sales centers so they know the product, they know what's launching, they know every in and out so they can talk towards their building or their lots or their whatever the best that they can um, to represent the developer and us. Um, from there, they would have a launch date. With the launch date, um, we try to do some contracts beforehand, which we all know works well. And with the launch <laughs> date, um, they would have a set date where they're pushing all of their people towards that date and then we would do um, a sales writing day then usually what we would do um, that would be kind of at the end of the cycle and then from there we'd want that sales agent to stay on probably the next three or four weeks for anybody that's still in the in their queue and to make sure that all contracts are um, ready to go all the buyers feel like they're being hand off, um, handed off to the sales manager or the team that stays in the Okanagan correctly um, and, and then from there, they would go back to Vancouver and we would hold, we would hold the hands of those, um, of the buyers um, internally until the end of the project. So project marketing um, agents, they get paid half of their commission upfront. Um, so whatever is negotiated with their contract, they get half upfront within 60 days and then the remaining half at the end of the project. So in a year, in two years, in three years, whatever the cycle is, that would be the payment for the agent. And again, remember, I ramble, so I hope that all made sense. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. So it's good um, to use up your frame with your concrete construction, just in terms of getting those back ends a little sooner. You know, concrete yeah. tower, it could be four years or so before that thing is done. So it is a bit of a long game in the end, but once you get immersed in it, as I'm sure you're, you're very well aware, once you get a couple years under your belt and you start getting your front ends in the same year that you're getting your back ends, that's when you really start to see the uh, fruits of your labor. <laughs> I love how you mention long game, Megan, because um, that's where you're going to be valued as a um, salesperson or sales rep in the industry is building that reputation that you're you're in it to um, for the betterment of the the business and for the company that you're working with and developer. Are you only you're not only hiring Oakland agents like you? It's basically like a sub agency agreement with any agents from other brokerages as well is that correct um to be honest so we have we do have some unlicensed people that work directly with ace but what we are going to do going forward is reach into the oakwin network before we look at any other agents um it's very important for us to build the oakwin okanagan brand here um to be as strong as possible and if we're pulling other agents from other companies, that's not really help. That's not us helping represent you guys and the whole brand. So um, there might be a few odd cases where we'll grab other agents from different um, different brokerages up here. But going forward, we'd hope they all join um, Oakland Okanagan, um, and we pull out of that pool for any new agents joining us um, because we want to train them so they can come up and go and then represent our stuff in the future. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So um, in what ways have you guys cultivated your team culture, um, knowing that you have kind of, I guess, um, little companies or little developments like here and there and even in Victoria? So how do you bring that team culture together? I think I was just going to crack a joke. I'm like, we spend a lot of time on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what we try to do is, so we do a lot of dinners, um, we do a lot of um, dinners, calls, uh, we try to make sure that when we do have a win, we make sure that everybody is being a part of it. 
Um, we make sure to represent, or sorry, to go out for everybody's birthday. We do a lot of internal things that really make us kind of like a family because we're in a community that is very small. So everybody seems to know everybody in the development world as well as the real estate world. Um, we, we work very hard to make sure that all of the staff, the management, and everybody else is invited to do um, a lot of fun, different things in the area um, to keep us all close and to keep us all understanding what everyone else is going through because that makes a happy, healthy sales team. Um, in the past, for other some of the other companies I've worked for in the past, they keep the sales team separate because they want them just to focus on their thing. That is the exact opposite of what we do. We want everybody to be working together, talking about their struggles, talking about their positives so they can feed off of it. It also helps us to move people around if somebody is burnt out on a project or if they're ready to just kind of flip the switch on it so we can make sure that everybody is, is prospering and, and being healthy on the projects they're on. Was that great? Yeah, good for you. Do you guys travel up to um, the island very often then and vice versa as well? I'm, I'm on the island right now. Oh, you yes. are? Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> We're planning on coming probably, uh, it's a little loosey-goosey at the moment, but we're definitely coming up in August. So maybe the last week of August? Yeah. Okay. That's great. Are you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I won't be there. I'll be back in Vancouver. <laughs> uh, but I guess um, in regards to your, yeah, yeah. It's so fun out here though. In regards to your guys' newer projects that are launching, are there any specific materials, um, I guess, or trends that you're seeing in homes that are selling at the moment that are very popular? So um, right now, I think the, it's actually funny because we, you would think that some of the lower priced units would be moving faster while mm -hmm. the market is kind of, um, mm -hmm. kind of adjusting, but we're seeing a lot of people up here in almost every kind of different product that we have looking at the either larger or more expensive units. So three bedrooms, that's uh, three bedroom homes or, um, or sub penthouses or penthouses, we're starting to see those get picked up a lot more. Um, as well as wood frame. People, keep, when they think of wood frame, they know it's going to be a better price than um, a concrete tower for the most cases. So a lot, of, a lot of what people are focusing on would be either the larger stuff or more wood frame instead of concrete just for price point. So either really high end or, or entry market level yeah. um, product. The really high end ones that are selling a lot more right now, are those people that are relocating from places like the mainland and they're purchasing as owner occupiers or are they investors? It's, it's a lot of investors. Investor or like It's a lot of investors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Remember with having a brand new UBCO campus right downtown mm -hmm. in Kelowna, we're seeing, we're seeing people that are looking at the Okanagan that never have before because they want their kids to be able to go to school here or they're looking at this rental as something that's going to have a much higher rental rate of return because it's so close to um, to a brand new campus where, and, and also it will give their kids and their kids' kids um, higher up and I guess the higher up chance to um, be able to apply and to get accepted because they'll have a mm -hmm. residence in the area because that's how universities work um, for the most yeah. part. Similar to yeah. UBC campus and stuff yeah. too in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. yeah. What yeah. we're seeing on the island, because we have quite a few lot and home um, builds there. One is Sandwich Ridge, um, which is about 600 lots, and another one is in Shawnigan. With those guys, um, people people just want to build homes. They just have to make sure that they can build them for the prices that the developers and the builders are putting out there. But um, home and lot sales have been huge on the island for us. Mm -hmm. Talking about building homes, um, we obviously have seen the shortage of supply and labor in the Lower Mainland, delays in completion date. How are your developers managing through that? This is something that every single developer that we're talking to or working with, it is their chief like struggle right now. Um, I'm thinking of one in particular who does a lot in Penticton and they're they're based out of the lower mainland but Penticton is somewhere where they're really expanding into and he's been doing this for over 40 years and he's like I can't get my projects done right now because I don't have the labor so I'm just gonna have to wait a little bit longer it really it really is it I mean 
I can't say the stats off the top of my head, but like the influx of people, this city is the fastest growing urban market in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have all these people moving here. I think everything has been so frenzied. I think it's just going to take a moment for, you know, people to settle in and whatever, whatever else. But yeah, I think, um, the guys that have been here in the Okanagan who have the longstanding relationships, you know, they're, I think that's honestly like the way to go. These guys have their relationships, they're trustworthy, they're loyal, they have their arsenal of their trades to actually get the projects done. It's more of a problem for the newcomers to the area that don't have access to those to those trades and they can't bring their trades in from the Lower Mainland because they need them in the Lower Mainland <laughs> or Alberta mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. And Jenny, you and Tony both know that in terms of developers, whenever, whenever we're bringing clients or whenever we're deciding to sign up with them, um, it's very important to look at who they do have to build and their brand and their integrity yeah. and what they mean to the buyer because as us as a project marketing company, we never want to go out with somebody that doesn't have all those ducks in a row because um, you're only good as your last project. And so what Megan's getting at is when right now we're working with these different developers, if they don't check all of our check marks, um, we have to be we have to really look long and hard if it's a product that we should be taking on mm -hmm. and if it's a project we should sell because if we can't go the long mile that doesn't just hurt us but it hurts the sales staff the marketing and everything else so it's it's super important for us to find out those things beforehand um, and 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 yes things that are going to be put on hold probably should be on hold until they're ready to go with um, with the influx of people coming here yeah, these dif these conversations can be really difficult with the developers, but it's very strategic too. And, you know, Megan, you having uh, worked in Dubai and Chad, you've worked in Mexico and the States across Canada. Um, what differences do you see in like working with developers or working with salespeople? Um, like what are some of the important differences that you, you see in terms of our like priorities or our, our um, necessities as like a client or a salesperson of yours do you do you see the difference in in the demands of of what we ask for um you know what i think i think in terms of salespeople, no matter where you go it's um it's anybody can be as good as their training um, um as well as putting people on shorter contracts and having the having your outline 100 percent outline or sorry you have your outline 100 percent written down and gone through to make sure that everybody is following it in terms of what's expected of them. Um, so in terms of sales agents anywhere, it's it's kind of all the same. Um, as long as they're go-getters and ready to go, um, they're gonna we're gonna work well together and hopefully be successful. Um, in terms of developers um, in different places, honestly, what ACE is, what, what makes ACE is, what makes ACE different is we're not taking on everybody. Um, mm -hmm. If we get 10 developers that come to us, we're probably saying no to five or six of them um, and then exploring the other ones because we just want to make sure that they fit the same vibe as us and we fit them. Um, so every morning we get up, we're excited and we don't have that pit in our stomach that mm -hmm. all of us know from being on a sales floor we've had in the past. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think well, maybe I answered a few different questions. Yeah, but I like, that worked. No, no, you it's hit good. them all. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> I sometimes ask awkward questions and they don't sometimes make any sense, but you answered it. <laughs> <laughs> she says what comes to her mind when it happens yeah, and they it. make sense. Yes. <laughs> um, since you guys are based in Kelowna, uh, share a little bit with our listeners about what type of growth in the next five years we'd maybe be able to see in your area um with the neighborhoods and infrastructure um i know that just alone with the ubc okanagan campus just with the um student the student demographic um they're looking at an injection of about ten thousand new students so never mind the support staff and all the other you know businesses and you know support that needs to come along with that and the faculty and everything else so i mean that alone is a huge injection um, tech is also really starting to pick up here, kind of like, um, you know, s satellite offices from obviously Vancouver is very tech driven at the moment, um, which is fantastic, but we're starting to get some of that overflow. They're starting to shut, set up shop here as well. So that is an amazing um, driver for the economy. 
And also probably the solitary good thing to come out of COVID is that people are now able to work a lot more freely um, and remotely. So a lot of people are moving here for that reason, because it's such a lifestyle destination. You know, you have mm. ground outdoor everything to do. Um, it is turning into much more of an urban city. So there's, yeah, there's growth in terms of, you know, the, I hope the art scene and, <laughs> you know, restaurants and there's, I can't even tell you how many vineyards around here. So anyways, there, there's a lot that Kelowna had to offer and there's a lot more that Kelowna has to offer in the next few years. So I think, um, the supply and demand. I think that what is happening with in interest rates and construction costs, it's going to cause some developers to put their projects on hold, which is only, only going to cause more of a disparity between the supply and demand. So I don't think this place is slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. And also all the communities from Oliver, um, Oliver, Asoyuz, Penticton, Vernon, all the communities that we're working in, Summerland, Peachland, they're all growing. And the cities are now for the first time in a long time looking at all the different um, all the different proposals that's coming in and making sure that they're the right ones to go in their city. But um, we're seeing growth in all of the communities and some of the communities that we've not seen growth. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, if you went, or a few years ago in Asoyuz, you'd never see anything change. It was like 15 of those small little hotels <laughs> on the lake. Everything was the same. <laughs> some things change and people moving out here full time, which is amazing. So you talked about the growth of ACE, um, growing the team, you're adding a creative designer, rebranding, putting together a new business plan. Um, it's, it sounds all exciting. What kind of projects do you have coming up in the next 12 months that we should be excited about and we should be telling all the agents in the Lower Mainland? <laughs> Uh, I will start with the one that we actually just launched a couple weeks ago now. Um, it's with one of our fantastic developers, Millennial Development. So that's Ryan Tamblin. He launched the Five Crossings um, micro studio, micro suite uh, development earlier this summer, which we had huge success with. It was sold out in about 48 hours over the launch weekend. So that's the same developer. Um, this time he shifted gears though. It is 20 townhomes. So they're three story, three bedroom, two and a half bathroom, double car garage uh, townhomes. They are close to the existing UBC Okanagan campus. So maybe a five, seven minute drive from there at most. You're also very close to the airport. Um, you're in a really nice quiet area. Uh, the next neighboring community is also a townhome development as well. So you really do get more of a community kind of family vibe there, which I think a lot of people are looking for. I mean, with rental rates being so expensive right now, to try to find somewhere and so like, you know, so little available on the market to find somewhere that feels more like a home, um, that, you know, feels more like single family home living, this is definitely a good option. It's only a 10% deposit. It will be completed by about this time next year. It's being phased. So August, September or so of next year, um, the prices are starting in the high 600s. In terms of investment, it's also a fantastic investment because you're going to absolutely be cash flow positive on it. You can be looking at about 3,500 a month per rent on that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I have a question I, about that. Yeah. yeah. Your guys' what's the typical average maintenance fee that you're seeing right now um, per price per square foot in those buildings? It's very different yeah, between depends. concrete and wood frame and then townhomes, especially with different, but we're seeing anywhere from forty eight cents to uh, townhomes. Um I you, don't know off of these ones. These ones I believe it was quite it's about two sixty a month. Yeah, about two sixty. So that's what we have on these ones. Okay, so um, about 20, is that 27 cents a square foot around there? Um, sure. <laughs> is that including, uh, is that including um, uh, AC? Like, is there AC in these, all these units? That would include your central air. It just wouldn't include things like your Wi-Fi, cable, TV, if you want that, your, your telecom services and electricity, I believe is the extra. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about amenities because I'm assuming that, you know, we're in this um, lake is in the backyard, but I'm assuming these buildings probably have awesome pools. 
So we're the one right behind us. So Water Street by the Park is one of the largest projects in the Okanagan. Um, like I said, three towers, 650 units. Um, Megan can tell you more about the amenities. She was a sales manager on this team and this building definitely has more amenities than anything else you can find in, in the it's Okanagan. It's insane, yeah. <laughs> it's like a year-round heated outdoor pool, two hot tubs, the entirety of the sixth floor, which is um, the podium level between the two towers. You have everything from like a co-work space for those people who work from home. There's like a rentable lounge, fire pits, outdoor kitchen area, gym, sauna, like all this stuff. It has everything. And I think that's actually something else that's a really good point in this market for the product that's out there or the projects that are going to be launching. You are going to need to see some of these things in that product to make it more desirable so it needs to be amenity rich as well as you know price sensitive but, yeah. and with this project you're going to be uh, seeing tower three which hasn't been released yet um being released shortly so oakland um, realtors and your offices will get to see it first as well as have first access to buy i have one more project that i want to throw in it's called savoy it is a few blocks away from ubco as we don't shut up about it. Um, and it is a 66 wood frame um, building by an amazing developer out of Alberta called Madison Avenue Group. That project is very, very different from what's happening downtown right now with so many towers being approved. This is going to be um, an, an amazing product that's wood frame um, with parking, um, a dog run, an outdoor deck and a shared lounge. Um, this is the one that anybody that's looking to invest right now at the best price point and to get in, I would definitely look at it. It's called Savoy. Um, it's, it will have a full package to send out to you guys and Megan will post that on the back end. But um, mm -hmm. it is unbelievable what they've done with this building. And instead of living in a concrete tower, it's an amazing option. Mm. Yeah, that's great. I can about it, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. You're just a wealth of information and you can tell that you have such a diverse background, right? With your experience and everything in the industry. Yeah. Uh, we normally like to round out our conversation with some really fun rapid fire questions if you're open to it. Do you have a few more okay. minutes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, <Love> first question. <laughs> if someone was visiting the Okanagan for the first time, where would you recommend that they visit? Or what should they experience either? I think I think definitely what you should do is pre-look. There are um, over 90 wineries just in our area, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, the uh, We are in the most um, the, the largest hotel on the water with some amazing restaurants. Um, so I definitely would take a peek at the Delta Grand, go to Oak and Crew for lunch. Um, I would enjoy the beaches. There's tons of beaches around here. Um, and also there's a hotel called Hotel El Dorado with an amazing deck right on the water. Um, I definitely have dinner there. And Megan also has posted a rate at these hotels on the back end. So if anybody would like to have a better rate at some of the larger hotels, um, yeah. we'd love to help. Yeah, our corporate rate for that for sure. I would also say you need to go boating because really you have not experienced the open <laughs> until you get out on a boat on like a hot summer day. And even as you're like blasting across the lake, it's like hot wind. It's pretty fantastic. You have to do that. <laughs> my girlfriends and I were, yeah, my girlfriends and I were talking about that last night is like at the yacht club, you just pay like an annual subscription or membership. And then you have all the access to all the boats and um, motorized, um, what do you call it? Bo boats or um, that are available in their inventory. Is that correct? It is, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they have like the different packages and stuff, but there are other rental companies as well. There's another boat, um, like boat operation, where basically you can buy a type of subscription to it. So depending on how much you want to use it and whatnot, and it's essentially you you book it, you show up, it's fueled, it's like valeted, ready to go for you, all shined up, and it has everything ready to go, and then you drop it at the end of the day. So you don't you get to have the fun of the boat without all of the work that goes into it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite season? Well, I don't love the sun as much as everybody else <laughs> in the staff. Um, so I love fall. Fall is amazing. Um, like I said, with the wineries, they do amazing fall wine festivals. Um, everything turns some beautiful colors. I love the fall, where I think yeah. almost 
ninety percent of Ace would love. Yeah. The summer. <laughs> the I love the fall also. It's just a little less intense heat and. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a great time, great time to be out here in the Okanagan. Winter is fun. Fall is my yeah. favorite season too. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. What are your each of your greatest achievements? Um, honestly, I think it's, and this is going to sound cheesy, but in the pat in the two, so we've done projects forever in the past two years to be able to put together an amazing group of people that is making money and that is working together. I cannot be. It honestly, it, it makes me super proud, and, um, and and I just can't wait to see where it's coming. But definitely, um, putting together Ace, taking people from all of these amazing companies and making them ours. I, I don't even I can't I don't even have words for how happy I am all the time. And as you can tell, I'm always happy. <laughs> but yours? Oh my gosh, I I honestly I don't know. I feel. What about your puppy, Reggie? <laughs> it's not an achievement, though. I don't know. I think I've I've packed up and moved by myself with a U-Haul. I, I've lived in, like, five different countries, packed up and moved there on my own, started life new, completely fresh. Like, I think that that's, like, yeah, I think my independence and um, a lot of people, a lot of people think that that's like scary and whatever. But for me, it's, it's just exhilarating. It feels like an adventure, and I can't can't wait to do it again in a long, long time because I'm working for Ace now, so I'm here for the long haul. But <laughs> um, looking back, I feel like yeah, I think that taking that leap of faith and really like emerging myself or immersing myself in different cultures, sometimes where a lot of times where English isn't the first language, and trying to make a go of it is yeah I think that might be my greatest achievement perfect yeah awesome what's the best piece of of advice you'd ever uh you've ever received from someone well for me it's not advice more so of it's a favorite quote and I think it is a good mantra Maya Angelou always said people may forget what you did they may forget what you've said but they'll never forget the way you made them feel and I think that's important mm. um important in the professional life your personal life and across the board <laughs> and actually it's it fun yeah. i just sent this out this morning um and it's 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 just kind of a, a tidbit but customers will never love a company until the employees love it first oh yeah so true, <laughs> so true. okay if you <clears throat> if you were not in real estate what would you be doing <laughs> but wasn't do it. <laughs> Maybe a pilot. A pilot sounds fun. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I, don't know, I once upon a time was looking at a librarian position at the UN in <laughs> Switzerland. <laughs> I think she has a little bit of a Beauty and the Beast thing. Um, she actually called me in Germany, being like, "I'm applying at um, a library, and I'm very excited." And I was <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I've never heard that one before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to share that story one day um, while we're on the lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one's an easy one to answer. Um, yeah. Where can our listeners find you? Um, they can find us either at the Delta Grand um, when they come to Kelowna, or they can find us at www.aceprojectmarketing.com. Um, and anybody can reach out to um, Megan or myself at any time. Well, thank you so much, Chad and Megan. Uh, I appreciate your time. I know you guys are so busy running this show, but congratulations on just all the success. You guys have sold over a thousand homes in over four cities, um, 40, 40 to 50 projects under your in your portfolio. And uh, looking forward to meeting you guys in person at the Kelowna office. Okay. I'd love to come visit you guys soon too. Please Honestly, do anytime. come. Yes. <laughs> um, we can't wait to meet you guys in person. And I heard so much about Jenny. She was a legend before I got to meet her. <laughs> so I'm so happy that um, she is a legend. Marketing. She is a legend. Tony, um, I bet you are as well. Um, and, I, <laughs> um, and thank you so much for having all of us. But I wanted to say thank you. And you guys, anytime you want to come up here. Um, we're here. Yeah, we love what you're doing. Thank you so much for giving us the time to speak about ACE today. We do appreciate it very much.